I N D I A N A, that's Indiana. Ballin' like Reggie Miller, that's Indiana. I put up on my state, that's Indiana. Watch me rap it in your face, that's Indiana. That's Indiana. That's Indiana. Hi, I'm Matt from Ludovox, and we are GenCon 2016 on uh, day two with Mr. Kurt Covert of Smirk and Dagger Games. Hi, Kurt. How you doing? Good to see you. Fine. Um, how's the show been for you? Uh, it's been amazing so far. Uh, it really is just uh, we're two days in, and we already blew through half the stock on all our new stuff, um, getting a lot of excitement. Uh, uh, you know what? I knew Dead Last was going to be very popular because we launched it at Origins, and it already showed its merit there. But you always cross your fingers on the other stuff you haven't actually had on the table yet, and Jacques has been doing great, too. So, um, Dead Last is a party game, right? Or a bigger game, maybe? Yeah, uh, it is a social party game for 6 to 12 players. So it's a big group, boisterous, you know high hilarity kind of a, a game with a lot of gnashing of teeth and cursing it at other people. And how much does a typical game last and what is the recommended age for the game? Well, on the box it says 14 plus, but quite honestly, anyone even eight and older can play it uh, and have here at the show even. Um, but uh, the game length is a little bit variable. I've seen play, uh, games play 30 minutes and I've seen them go uh, a good 45, 50 minutes as well. Okay, so uh, Dead Last is a game of social collusion that's written in the box, and it is a re-theming, well, not really a re-theming, but um, a streamlining, I don't know, of Tontine. You are going to tell us more about it. So, uh, why do we do what we do, and what do we do? So, you're correct. This, this used to be called Tontine. We changed the name uh, just to be a little bit more provocative, I think. Um, the object is to be dead last. So it's a last man standing kind of game, and that happens every single round. Um, so it is a social collusion game. Now, it's going to appeal to social deduction players, but there is no hidden traitor in this game. You are all equally allies and betrayers at the drop of a hat. Um, and that's because you're conspiring and then voting every round on who dies next. Now, obviously, you've got a handful of voting cards here that represent all the players at the table. And they're simply the cards that indicate those other players, as well as your own card. Um, and that's important because if you think the target is you, you can try to protect yourself. Uh, if you are, in fact, the target, you'll stay in the game and you'll take out one of your attackers. Now, because that's true, you end up communicating when you start conspiring in very subtle ways. So things like this. You know, or you can even take uh, the cards in your hand. Um, and as I'm talking to you about you know, who's going to, uh, you know, let's, let's gang up on, on blue over there. I can flip this card around, and we're actually targeting you. You can't see, but I flipped this over forward. Um, so anything is legal. You can even text somebody. Um, you can get up from the table and whisper in someone's ear. Everything is legal, uh, so long as you don't tip off your target, uh, and that's the idea. But the one thing that's really interesting about this game is, obviously, when we vote, and we all you know, vote at the same time, we flip it over, obviously, whoever has the most votes is dead. But really importantly, if you did not vote with the largest voting group, you're also eliminated. So very quickly, it goes from 12 players to 5 to 3, and it also forces you to make those alliances across the table uh, because if you don't try to influence them to, to vote your way or see it developing and say oh I just saw what's happening I'm gonna jump on the bandwagon if you don't do all that you're gonna be out of the game so you're constantly like looking around you know eyes are darting back and forth and it just it gets really funny so why would we assassinate uh, people and eliminate people uh, is it related to those ingots here yes thank you so the last player standing every round gains four gold bars. Uh, now, the gold bars are all numbered from three to five points, uh, and that's variable. We don't know what that is. Um, so the first player to reach 24 points actually wins the game. So even if you're eliminated, you're back a minute and a half later. And if you're using your time well, you're already conspiring for the next round with the other people who are dead. 
<laughs> what about the ambushes? Uh, what, what if an ambush succeeds? So if you are accused and you have an ambush card. So if you have played your ambush card, um, it does not count as a vote against you. Um, but what you're saying is, I saw you coming, and instead of me dying, I'm taking out one of the people who voted for me instead. But if I'm wrong and I'm not actually the target, I'm dead. So it's not a cure-all. Uh, does it work when you are non, uh, when you are not accused but non, uh, not in the majority? No, you either have to be in the majority. Um, but basically, if, if you are not the, the, the guy who's voted for, whether it's a tie or not, you have to be a target in the game for an ambush to work. Otherwise, you eliminate yourself. Yeah. Um, so, can we talk a bit about Smirk and Dagger, um, about Jacuzzi, about uh, the expansion of Nevermore? Sure. Um, Jacuzzi is a, uh, a, another game that we uh, have launching here at the show for the first time. Um, Jonathan uh, Lavalie is the designer. He's right out of Toronto. Um, and um, he brought me a game that's it's interesting. It's kind of like Reverse Clue. It's not a whodunit game because we all done it. We killed the old miser, and he deserved it, by the way. But now, not all of us have to go to prison for that. So this is shoving evidence on other people, trying to get them accused of murder, and us go scot-free. One loser and a table full of winners who got away with murder. That's what Jacuzzi is all about. And the expansion for Nevermore? Oh, and Nevermore. Well, Nevermore is our card drafting game uh, in Poe's universe. Uh, it was so popular, uh, and I got actually challenged by another publisher to come up with character cards for the game. So now there are 12 draftable characters, all based on Poe. So uh, got Usher and Legia, uh, Dr. Tar, Professor Feather, all of those folks. And each has a, a unique ability for your human form, and should you be turned into a raven in the game, a separate ability. Um, that, and it comes with a really nice deluxe poker chip, clay poker chips, that replace the cardboard tokens from the original game. Yeah. So thank you, Kurt, and see you on Nudevox. Bye. I-N-D-I-A-N-A, that's Indiana. Falling like Reggie Miller, that's Indiana.